there exists a special place, a natural gem with beautiful landscapes and a unique geological history. Here's the story of Geopark, the Southfin Archipelago. 18,000 years ago, at the peak of the last ice age, Southfin was covered by a kilometer-thick glacier of ice. For thousands of years, the ice moved back and forth, churning the land like a great bulldozer and shaping the landscape with hills and valleys. During the Ice Age, large parts of the world's oceans were frozen to ice. Where today there is sea, back then there was land. At some point, it became warmer and the ice began to melt. Slowly, a new landscape was revealed, littered with clay, earth and stones that the ice had brought with it. Over time, trees began to appear and the land became covered with forests. The first people to form settlements were hunters and gatherers. They lived on roots, fruits and berries, and they hunted wild animals using spear, bow and arrow. They discovered that clay hardened when fired and that it could be used to make useful objects. In the evening, families met to eat what they had gathered and talk about the day's experiences. When the glaciers began to melt, water ran through large rivers and into the sea. This caused the sea level to rise and spread inland. The Southfin Archipelago was, for a long time, protected from flooding by the hilly landscape along the coastline. At some point, these natural defenses breached, and the water flooded forests and settlements, forcing the settlers up into the hills. Many of the hilltops formed the islands that we know today while the lower-lying areas became the South Finn Archipelago. Settlers began to cut down the forest to farm the land, using some of the branches to build livestock pens. To grow grain in the fields, the farmers first had to remove stones left by the Ice Age. The larger stones were often used to build structures like burial mounds and long burrows to honor the dead. From the Stone Age until the Viking Age, people developed new ways of building bigger and better ships. In the archipelago, high levels of seamanship had to be mastered in order to navigate the island safely. For the people of the archipelago, the sea was the fastest way to travel, and ships came from far and wide to trade at trading posts along the coast. Some of the trading posts grew into the towns and cities we know today. The fertile soil and clay deposited during the Ice Age and the mild climate along the archipelago provided good conditions for cultivating the land. A large number of manor houses appeared as produce to trade was plentiful and wealth was generated across the archipelago. Also, villages and coastal cities grew and they needed bricks made from clay at local brickworks. More and more people flocked to the cities and in the 1800s, new factories brought new jobs to the archipelago but also polluting smoke and dirt. In the early 1900s, the Southfern Archipelago attracted numerous artists who found inspiration in the idyllic island communities and beautiful glacial landscapes. Until a hundred years ago, almost all goods were transported by sea and steam ferries transported people from island to island. In the 1960s, cities were growing, as were the number of cars on the road. The solution was to build bridges. Not everyone, however, liked the hustle and bustle of big city life. Some dreamed of a life free from stress and noise and moved to the countryside to live in collectives and to be closer to nature. Today, many of us love being closer to nature. We cook over campfires and sleep in shelters. We hike along the coast, cycle in the hills, swim and fish in the sea and sail around the archipelago. We must help each other to take care of our shared planet and make sure that we all have a special place in which to live. Also in the future. <laughs>